Hey guys, it's CR Gaming. Today we have the Antonov 225, and I'm just going to give you a quick video on how to get started flying this. This is not going to go into detail of all the systems, but I'll show you how to use the autopilot, I'll show you how to load the plane up, and the basics of getting the uh, plane ready to go. So the one thing you want to make sure you do is make sure you have enough fuel for your flight. You are going to use the sim for the fuel loading of the plane. You can change your fuel right here. And there's only two tanks, so it makes it really simple. The real plane is more tanks, but they simplify it here for you. Over here, we have our little fly pad. On the ground, you can turn on your GPU, shocks, main door. You can open up. That takes a couple minutes. You have your cabin doors, interior doors, and your lighting. All this can be done on the fly pad. Once the doors are open, you can select different items that you'd like to load. And you just click right here to load them into the plane. I'm not going to go through that today because it does take a little while to open and close that door. You can also look on the payload screen and you can adjust your passengers in the rear and forward cabin as well as your cargo in the bottom with the actual weights right down here. And you can apply the load right here. If you are looking for weather, I have a flight plan from LAX to Seattle and you can actually just click it in right here. I'm not sure why it's loading, uh, not loading correctly right there, it normally does. We are going to hit load plan from GPS. This will load our flight plan that we already have configured into the fly pad. And normally the arrival and departure weather work. I think the reason it's not showing me right now is because earlier today the Sobo servers were down and so it turned off my internet for Sobo. So that's probably why it's not working. But generally you would have the weather right here and here as well. Just want to go into the options. One of the th couple things you're going to want to do is make sure this is set on English. Unless you uh, speak some foreign languages, you're going to want that in English. I have this on empirical, and I have the autopilot window set to hundreds of feet. Or I'm sorry, hundreds of meters when you're setting the autopilot, not one meter at a time. And I also have the realism for the door movement on fast. It is still pretty slow, so you're going to want that on fast. Uh, they will have maps in here. They've seen that on some of the previews, but it's not there right now. But for now, that's uh, pretty much what you have. This is the converter tab. You're going to want to use that a lot just to switch from empirical to meters and such. Uh, for instance, I'm going to want to be, you know, keeping below 250 knots, under 10,000 feet. Well, that's 463 kph. Just so you know that. Um, same thing with distance. If I want to climb to 12,000 feet, it's going to be uh, 3,657 meters. So you're just going to be able to need to put these numbers into the autopilot. So we're going to come over here and put fourth, uh, what was it here, 463 uh, into our auto throttle. That's going to be right up here where it says V app. Now, even though we have it in English, all the warnings are in English and such, but the two, uh, screens are actually still in a foreign language. I'm turning this the wrong way here. Sorry about that. The next one over where it says 1000, that's going to be the meters we have it set to. So we're just going to keep moving this up here. Just takes a couple seconds here. I wanted to put that all the way at 4,000. If you look on the lower right, you see our flight plan is preloaded into the GPS. And the magenta line is there. So it will follow a course as long as you intercept the course first. And it's just taking a little while here. Right in the middle of the screen right now is your primary flight display. Now that is in knots and feet. So if you want to fly like you're an American... That's the screen you're going to want to look at occasionally. I think we said uh, 463, so we're almost there. I'm just presetting this before we take off. And then we wanted to have our altitude at 3657, so this will be a little faster because I go by hundreds. 3600. Okay. Now, we do have a course knob right here. Actually, that's the turn knob. This is the course knob right here. And as you can see, our uh, our course heading, let's see here. It's right behind, uh, behind us. I'm going to put it in front. I'm using my controller to move it a lot quicker. Alrighty. So as you can see, that uh, small mark on the right there is moving when I move this red knob. That's going to be the course that we set on our autopilot. That's kind of like your heading bug on the autopilot. Now, if you do have a controller, you can set this to another knob so you can see it at the same time. That's a lot easier. That's what I'm doing here. 
but that's how you adjust that right there. So at this point, I'm going to take off. Now in this plane, it doesn't really matter, but on the real plane, you would want to move your throttles up slowly. Now we have three throttles set to engine number one and three set to number four. Nothing is set to two and three. So you're going to want to, whatever you do in your, when you're configuring your throttles, you want to set it up for one and four and you'll have all six engines here. So we do want to slide it up nice and easy. Now this screen right here is your throttle position. This screen right here is what your engines are actually doing. So eventually they should get close to each other. That's our parking brake right here is this red knob and we're moving. Oh, I do want to make sure our flaps are at a two notch or one notch here. Right there is where the flap setting is. So now this is Mach right here, so that's not what we're really using at the moment to determine our speed. I'm going to be using the uh, screen right here. We're at 140, 140 knots. This is in knots. This is in kph. Okay, so we're at V1 now. Once we get to about 180, we can easily rotate. So I'm just pulling back on the stick a little bit. Positive rate, gear up. I'm going to switch on the auto throttle now. I just hit this AT button and it'll automatically try and achieve 468. Now the plane is a little nose heavy at the moment, so I'm going to use a little bit of trim. Whoops. Too much trim. The trim is very sensitive on this plane. Now I'm climbing at about 6,000 feet per minute, so we don't want that. Okay, that's a little bit better. We're still climbing too fast here. So you just gotta play with it a little bit, make sure I'm putting my flaps up at the moment. The trim is extremely sensitive. So just a little bit goes a real long way. And as you can see, my engine's already spooling back. I don't have a very heavy load on today, so it's able to climb pretty easily. So, if I now, I have this set to uh, course one, this little knob right here, this will select what the GPS, or the autopilot is following. Am I following course one, which is set by that heading that I showed you earlier? We can have the VORS, we can have the NAV, uh, that's the GPS, or approach. So I'm going to set it to core one right, course one right now. And as you can see, that's a little bit to the right is where I have it right now. And I'm going to turn on the autopilot. The ER button is basically your master autopilot switch. And the APM button would be holding my uh, pitch and heading. But for now, we're going to hit PC. And PC is going to make it follow whatever you have selected here. So we're going to be turning to the right slightly until we uh, reach our heading there. Now this instrument right here is your altitude in meters. So just keep in mind that this is your altitude in feet. Two different things. So we're passing through 7,000 feet already. Now one of the things you can do is click on this VEL. Now that is going to climb while maintaining the speed you have set here. So if I uh, reduce my throttle, I'm going to turn off auto throttle. And I can reduce my throttle. It should bring my nose down. Should. Yeah, see now my nose is going down. Basically, it's, it's trying to maintain this speed that I have set right here with whatever throttle I have. I, it will actually descend if, uh, if it can't do it. So after takeoff, if you don't want your throttles going max the entire time, you can reduce your throttle and it will climb as fast as it can here. This uh, jumps up and down a little bit. This is in feet per minute. Um, as it adjusts to the speed that you're trying to get here. Now I have it set to stop at 3600. It will automatically switch to high when I get to 3600. If it doesn't, you click this little blue thing and that will hold your altitude. Max is what VEL is once you're in the Mach zone. Once you get to a fast enough speed and high enough, it'll switch you to max. 
while you're climbing. But remember, I had this set to stop at about 12,000 feet, if I recall, uh, which was 3657. So uh, it should stop climbing right about 12,000 feet. And as you can see, my rate of ascent is going down. Now, obviously, you can see here we're way off course from where we want to go. If we were on an intercept for the course, I could switch this to nav right here and click on PC again. It would go right on course. But I don't want to do that today because uh, I'm sure you guys want to see me try and land this plane. So I'm just going to actually turn around. Another thing we can use is this H3. This will be a pitch hold. So um, if I click on H3, it would hold my current pitch and I'll make sure we're still on PC here so we, now it's holding my current pitch and by adjusting this I can go higher or lower so now if I set this to 1000 because I want to descend I can hit H3 that's going to sync it to my current pitch and then I'm going to lower this to 5000 or 500 meters per second so that's a pretty uh, quick descent and it's going to try and maintain that. This is going to bounce up and down a couple times. But it's not 500. This is 500 meters, not feet per second. So it gets a little confusing. This gauge right here is in feet per second. This is in meters per second. So just make sure you keep in mind what gauge is what when you're looking around to make sure that you don't, um, you know, go the wrong speed. Now, if I have my auto throttle turned on, I have my, uh, it's going to slow my descent because I'm going too fast. But I'm going to turn off my, uh, I'm going to turn on auto throttle and as you can see it's going to reduce my engine speed immediately because I'm going over 402 knots. Over here you can also see I'm going too fast. I have my barber pole and I'm above my barber pole and my mock. So I'm going too fast right now. Quite a bit too fast. So as you can see my uh, throttle reduced to almost nothing. The other way we can send is if we do hit this VS, uh, VEL button again, now it's going to automatically drop my throttles like it already did, and it's going to descend as fast as possible while maintaining... Oh, I don't want 604. Uh, it jumped this up because it maintains your current speed. So i got to lower this down to 460. And since it's trying to slow down while descending, you see my vertical speed is not descending very fast. Even though it knows I want a lower altitude, it's going to wait until I get to the appropriate speed before descending. I'm going to throw up a little speed brake to get us there quicker. And you can see that worked pretty well. <laughs> so now it's going to descend as fast as possible while maintaining 460 knots. When it gets to my desired altitude of 1,000 meters, it will automatically switch to altitude hold. So right now we're not using this pitch control. We're using the um, automatic uh, descend as fast as possible control here. Now if I switch this to pitch control, since I wasn't descending very much, I was only at a slight angle, it automatically set this to zero. As I move that down, as you can see, it's making my pitch go lower here. But I'm going to click it back on the VEL. At this point, I'm going to turn this bird around. So I can do that by adjusting right here. And as you can see, the plane is automatically turning. When we make this turn, let's take a look from outside. Pretty beautiful plane. This screen down here will tell you different things about your autopilot, and it will be in English as long as you have English selected. While we're making the turn, a couple other things I just wanted to go over with you. Uh, we do have our lighting switches. Those are all up here. Here's your landing lights. Ta or taxi's in the middle. I believe landing is up. Taxi is down. Or uh, down is off here. Uh, let's see here. 
I'm not sure what all this uh, is because the language is not English. I'm guessing one of them is your strobes, one of them is your, uh, you know, taxi lights, those type of things, uh, beacons. I'm just going to leave them all in the up position. Up here we have our navigation panels uh, for our radios and such. I'm not sure what this panel is. Uh, they list it in the instruction manual as the pilot panel. Copilot has one just like it over there. Might be for lighting and such. If you do need your wipers, it's this little knob here. We have uh, trim controls here. And here, these are all your trim controls. You can also use advanced modes on the autopilot. When we have it in pitch mode, you can adjust things right here. And you can also use this inner black knob to make it turn. I'm just using the outer knob to control the course. That seems to be a little bit easier right now. And as you can see, we're now on the course I selected. Whether it's going to get me back to the airport or not, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, somebody's going to look at the VFR map because I don't really have the GPS program correctly. Okay, there's LAX right there. So we're going to want to turn left so we can come in. So I'm going to turn my heading to the left. And I can actually set up a direct to LAX if I want to. I'm not very good with this thing here. So we need a K. Okay, K. We're typing L. A. No, I don't want Finland. X. Okay, enter, activate. Okay, so now I'm just going to click it onto nav and click PC. And now it's going to be following the navigation. Autopilot nav on. So as you can see, it's leaving my selected course and trying to follow this magenta line. Um, I think I can even set up an approach in here, but I am not really good at using this thing yet. Let's look on procedures. Uh, I guess selected approach. Uh, yeah, we're going to be heading in that direction, so I'll choose 6 left. That'll work. Enter. Vectors. Load. Yes. Procedures. Activate the final. Hopefully that'll get us there. Oh, I need to turn that way. Direct to uh, Nathan, I guess. So as you can see, this takes a little while to get used to. But this is a standard Garmin GPS that you'll find in other planes. I thought that was the waypoint, right? Yeah, there we go. Okay. So I gotta put PC back on, because it lost the navigation fix. And let me look on my uh, map here if it's actually gonna go to where we want. No, not at all. <laughs> Alright, we're just going to put a course hold in there. I must have typed in something wrong. Okay, so I'm going to go to course 1, hit PC, and it's going to turn to my left here. Now you can see my engine spooled up a little bit. That's because I believe I'm at a thousand meters going the speed that I selected. Or close to a thousand meters right here. And as you can see, it lit up high here. Uh, that's maintaining my altitude at the moment. So I'm just going to use the VFR map. Uh, you could use the GPS if you're a little better at this than I am. But uh, clearly, 
I'm having trouble with the GPS and finding the airport. <laughs> or getting it to go to the airport. Here we go, I think I got it now. Oh, there we go. So if you uh, watch a tutorial on how to use this GPS, you'll be a lot better. Um, clearly I had an issue using that GPS here. But it is following the magenta line now. The main thing is you need to have it on a course to intercept the magenta line. If you are too far from the magenta line, it won't just like fly there. And those are the runways right there. We got to get down. We're a bit high. So I'm going to turn off my auto throttle. Turn off all my assistance. I'm going to use a little bit of speed brake as well since we're quite high. I'm going to put out one noxia flaps. I'm going to drop the gear. Now remember, as you change the configuration of the airplane, the uh, trim is going to drastically change. So you're going to need to make sure you trim it out so you can land appropriately. If we look on the outside of the airplane, you can see that all the gear is down now and the flaps are down one notch and you see the speed brakes are up a little bit. As my speed is slowing down past 220, I'm going to put my speed brakes back up. I feel like I'm at a good approach right now. And I'm going to give it a little bit of throttle actually. Now, unfortunately, my settings are really low at the moment because the um, Asobo is having some issues with their servers. But we can still see the runway and get a good idea of how this is all supposed to work here. Now, this is going to be my fourth landing in this plane. And the first landing was a crash. So uh, it's not going to be perfect, but I can at least show you roughly how to do it. Now you're going to want a little bit of nose up on this plane on landing, but not much. It's a big plane, so you don't want to go too crazy. I think I'm a little high at the moment. I'm going to reduce my thrust. Now I'm going to want to come in at about... Yeah, I see the poppies now. I'm definitely high. I'm going to want to come in at about 160 knots, give or take, depending on my load. So I'm going to reduce my throttles even more. I'm coming at a bit fast at 200 knots, so... A little bit of speed brake as well before I even hit the ground. I also didn't put my flaps all the way down. That would help. Battery critical. Alrighty, we're a little high still. A little high and a little fast, but we can make it work. I'm not that heavy. Okay, I'm on the ground. Whoops, I wasn't on the ground. I thought I was on the ground. Such a tall plane. Okay, so that wasn't ideal. <laughs> Need to use some reverse thrust. And as you can see, one, two, three, four, and five, and six are all rolling back. 
Okay, so not a very good landing. I came in too fast. I came in too high, and I forgot to put my flaps all the way down before landing. So, not a good landing at all, but uh, I'm sure you'll do better. Um, it is a fun plane. Just takes a lot of getting used to. It flies really nice. Uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. This is just supposed to be a basic video. I will be making a more in-depth video once I'm better at flying the plane and can show you all the features on it. But this should get you started. Have a good time flying the Antonov 225. Thanks for watching.